Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to this video. If you're here to watch this video, you know what you're here for. To see how you hang a feature wall wallpaper. Tips and tricks of the trade. So without further ado, let's crack on and let's get into this video. Thanks. Welcome back everybody. You've seen the intro, you know what we're doing and I'm back on this job. You've seen this wall a couple of times I think. I'm back on this job after a couple of weeks of finishing off in another room and if you want to see those videos they're there. They're in the playlist for the wallpapering and feature wall hanging. Now I'm back in this room and as I said on the last videos the wallpaper that was going in here has now gone into the kitchen area and that's in that playlist as I say and the customer last couple of weeks they've managed to pick a, a nice paper that is actually one that have previously hung last last year about this time last year so if you want to watch that that's telling you how to set out wallpaper but I'm in here it's same wallpaper it's the I'll get it it's the Scion I'll say it correctly this time it's the Scion brand and you can just see what the collection is I can't see it can't read it from behind but it is the dragonfly wallpaper focus focus and it's the dragonfly wallpaper lovely paper right i'm not going to say i'm going to tell you how to hang wallpaper because oh, clearly i am but can you see this wallpaper can you see how the position i don't know you can see it as well can you see how the there you go can you see how the position of the main feature of the pattern of the dragonfly is offset to the center of the pattern Oh, should I say the centre of the paper width? How do we get around that? Don't worry, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. But the main concern, which adapt, alter, however you want to say it, this wall, you know, I wall rocked it. It's got the fibre lining on. That was on another video up in that playlist. But the fireplace is slightly off centre. I know, how can you get it wrong? I've actually pre-measured, i.e. from one side, this side over here, to the centre, and then to the centre back out. I've got the middle, and that is just there. But that middle is not the middle of the fireplace. The fireplace middle is, I'd say, nearly let's call it half an inch out it's half an inch out what's half an inch between friends not a lot but paper wise i want to get this right so let me tell you what i'm going to do i'm actually going to hang from the center of the fireplace so i'm going to use the center of the fireplace as the key lining up line you're getting me aren't you i'm going to go from the middle now, I'm not going to hang this paper from the middle like that on one either side like I normally do. Well, I don't always do it because sometimes, let me bring you in, sometimes you have to weigh up your papers that if you are hanging to the edges, that, not, that might not be right. Sometimes you have to find the middle of your paper and hang 50%, 50%, like that, do you get it? So instead of being there and there, you actually hang the centre of the paper as so. That's because some papers balance better that way going around a chimney breast. You have to wait till what works the best for the actual pattern that you're doing and the area, i.e. if this was a proper predominant chimney breast sticking out, it might be better to do straight across the middle that way instead of doing a half and a half makes sense so what i'm going to do because this paper is offset i'm going to as near as damn it get a line between the head and the tail of that dragonfly and that head and tail of the dragonfly will be laser lined up to correspond, you can see that, there you are, I can see me laser, to 
correspond with the middle of that fireplace. Because visually, visually that will look better when you're sitting down looking at the wallpaper when you're in this room watching telly. Now, you know about positioning of wallpapers, and I'll bring you up because the ceiling's white, the walls are very light coloured, and the armadillo's white. You won't see it very well. What you're going to do is, this is a half drop paper. Now, half drop is the staggered effect. It goes across on an angle like that. But this first length, I am going to hang. Can you see where the tail is there? I'm going to hang that there is a, there, it doesn't make sense, that I'll have a good two or three inches at the top like that, I'm going to try and do it, where you see the head of that dragonfly and then whatever happens below it, that's just how it has to fall. Because visually again, the middle focal point of that middle fireplace will be where that dragonfly is about there and I don't want to chop off its head. Now you could chop off its head there and find that you've got your full dragonfly that side and a full dragonfly that side. That's up to you if you want to do it like that. But I would prefer to see a full dragonfly up at the top going down, matching nicely at the bottom. Now, I'm just going to go off camera and I'm going to try and balance it and see if I can get three dragonflies in that gap between the top of the fireplace there and where I'll be cutting up at the top. So bear with me, let me just see if that measures out all right. So let's see where it falls. So what I'm trying to do is get three of these in the gap between the top of the fireplace which I think I will be able to do looking at this. I'm going to keep a distance away from the top of the head, from the antennae. Let's call it two and a bit, two and a half inches. Get that up there. That'll be nice. And we come down and we could probably balance that with, I'll get my ruler on it. I'll do it in inches because it makes it bigger numbers. I can feel the top of the fireplace there. Currently that's sitting at five inches away. I'll bring that down to make it, can we do four inches? Yeah. Can we get four inches at the top? Let's have a look. So we can get four inches. Yeah, we can get as good as four and a bit inches there. So by the time I've juggled that about, I could probably get four and a half inches at the top. Four and a half inches between the top of the fireplace and the tail. And then from anything else, it just has to go as it goes. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a piece off so I'm not working with too much and we'll take it from there. Now before we just start getting into this, I've made sure I'm at the centre. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. I've made sure I'm at the centre of the fireplace there. I've even put a piece of tape so if I lose my line up the middle, with the actual vertical on the laser liner. And I'm using one of these laser liner. I've got it on a little stand behind me. See, it's flashing away because I'm not level. That straightens up on the pendulum. Once that's lined up there, I will get the paper on and line up that dragonfly to the laser going top to bottom. Now you're gonna to say to me, how do you know that the edges are plumb? What I'll do once I know roughly where that dragonfly is and I'm happy with it because I won't get it down totally in one go, I will then reposition that laser liner so the laser liner is giving me a true plumb edge on the wallpaper. But you'll see that as I do it. Don't worry. It's all in hand. 
Tub paste of choice today. We're back with the wicks, wallpaper adhesive. This is straight out the tub. You don't need to mix it up, but you can just mix it up with a, a mixing stick just to um, loosen it off. And roller, I've got the rotor gold medium um, sleeve, which is nice, puts a nice amount on. I've still got my um, two and a half inch to cut in top and bottom, and then roll the wall, because it's paste the wall, non-woven paste the wall. Right, so what I've done, you've seen me just paste it and I've pasted the top and bottom with the brush, rolled it, yeah, you know that. Now, I've pre-cut that length, normally I'd work off the roll. I've pre-cut that length, mainly for the reason is I've got a little bit of work at the top of the fireplace because with it being an offset pattern, I'm going to be going just past, I don't know where you can see it, just past that corner with a strip down the side of that fireplace so always make sure you've got your right length cut now my plan is to get that on following the dragonfly head and tail on that laser liner as i've explained and then i'll try and balance it quite equally as best i can roughly about four inches top and bottom spacing now whatever any other length does after that i'm not too worried about because I'll have that center focal length with the dragonfly in the middle of that fireplace, which will be spot on. Now, I know some of you probably already shouted and commenting, if I am laser leveling vertical to that dragonfly, what, a, what if the print of that dragonfly is slightly off? I, I'm already aware of that. What I'm gonna be doing is getting the position of that dragonfly. Once I've got it in position roughly where I want it, I will check to make sure that the laser is getting me a plumb edge. Can't do any more than that. So um, let's crack on with it. Now I'm up here to hang, hope you can see me all right. I've got plenty of space between the top of the dragonfly there. And roughly I'm hoping we'll get from the top of the antenna to the cut of the ceiling, about four and a half inch. And that's what I'm gonna gauge it on. Now I'm going to drop that because, as I say, I pre-cut it. I can see where my laser liner is and I'm going in now. So let's try and get approximately four and a half. Let's have a look. We're not lined up just yet because I don't want to be moving this around any more than I need to. Top of the antenna, I'm just about four inches, so I'm not too bad at that. I'll leave it there for now. And we're going to bring that paper across just to get that tail on that laser liner. Pull it back. I've got the head. This one's bringing across there. I've got the head lined up with the tail as good as I could possibly get there. Let's bring it down on these. Do the same again. That's on there. Let's just see what the gap is between the top of that. We're doing inches because it's big numbers. That's at five. So I need to bring that down by about half an inch and I'll be happy with that. So because I've not got it all the way down yet, I can pull it off. Just check that top, if it is four and a half inch, I know that I've got to bring down half an inch. Yeah, 
So we fired at the bottom. I'm going to bring it, well, I'll say down, we've got to bring it up, haven't I? Right, that's too high, so we'll come back down on that one. I want four and a half, so I'll pull it off. Let's get four and a half there. This is your fiddly length that you'll be doing. This is what takes your time. Happy with that. That was a quick one. Just over four and a quarter, and it should be about the same here. Yeah, that's spot on. Now let's get this properly lined up now. Bring it across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check that again. I'm on that tail nicely. I'm not going to get it totally down just yet. Yeah, it's still all right there. I want to make sure that these edges are now plumb. I've got my glasses because the day is very bright. I'm moving that across. You see it wiggle, wiggle. And do you know what? You won't believe that. I don't know if you can see it. Probably you can't. That edge is plumb. So it shows you how good the plumbing is on that. I'm gonna get it down at that and start trimming. Start with the middle. I've got my squeegee spatula. Up, up, up and down. Don't take it to the size just yet because you don't want to move the paper any more than it needs to. And then get it in at the top of that fireplace, editing. This is another one of those papers that will show paste. So make sure you wipe it down. Look at that, I've got a nice spacing at the top there and I've got a nice spacing at the bottom there. You cannot ask for any better than that, other than the fireplace being in the centre. So I've got that down, I'm happy with that. I will check it over with the hanging brush in a moment. There's a little bit of paste being picked up on the spatula. We'll wipe that off in a minute. I'm happy with that, I'm gonna cut at the top. So I've got a sharp blade. I've just got a shorter trimming knife. Make sure you get in with your plastic blade first. And do littler cuts, don't try and cut it all in one. Now this should cut really nice because it's an unwoven. Can you see I'm only doing a bit of a cut at a time and then moving the spatula straight, straight edge along with me. And that is perfect. I've got a box of warm water. Just wipe off any excess paste that might have crept through that edge. close as you can to the edges as you bring down there. Right, the tricky bit, let's move the camera around. Right, we're down on everything, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get it in to the fireplace top edge and I can just feel where the corner is. Now, what you would do, if it was normal paper, and I'll do it here because, do you know what? I'm a professional and probably you're not. <laughs> not being rude. Find the corner between the wall and the fireplace. Just get your pencil, pencils, HB. That's all you need, an HB pencil. Nothing too soft, nothing too hard. Find where it joins into the corner 
and just mark it. Now, what you would do is cut across there into that corner. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I know where that corner is and I'm going to cut that neat with the straight edge now. That will then give me a piece to put in there. And what I will do, I will trim it down so I'm not working with the full width. You'll get me when you see what I've done. So let's do it again. We make sure we squeeze you all the way to the edge so that last bit's all down. I can see where the corner is. Make sure there's no paste on your blade. Snap off your blade frequently. Keep your blade in place when you move your straight edge. Now I sometimes see people not cutting like that, they're cutting that way. You can get away with it, but the fear is you might slip and go straight up your wallpaper. This is there to protect it. Now that is in place, I'm not going to move that until I've cut that stretch there. Now we know it's only going to be about half an inch, so I'm going to come there. See what I've done? That's waste, that can go. Now this piece here will bend and go down there. This is where your laser liner comes into its own. I will get the laser liner in place. Now, I know I don't need all that, so I'm going to trim it down a bit more. And that piece of paper is bent nicely. The same with the bottom. I know I don't need all that, so I'm trimming the excess a bit shorter. I'm happy. Right, let's get that laser liner in place so I can see where I need to be. Let's bring the laser liner in. I'll do a little bit of work on this now. If you feel there's a bit of paste missing, I haven't got paste missing, but I'll just show you what you do. Just repaste it, look. Put my glasses on, move my laser into position to tally up with that. You can't see it, I can. My laser is now plumb on that edge, and I'm going to bring this piece of paper strip plumb with that. And it is so easy. Now once you get into that corner, release the pressure of that corner. Now I know where I've got to cut because I've pressed it in. I'm going to do that. Let's get that right. I'm happy. I'm going to get my squeegee, just get that angle in. Just getting it neat. Same with the bottom. Press it into the corner. Am I happy with that? Yes. So I'm going to cut that. Can you see that? Cut that corner there. I'm going to go straight into it. I'm not going to... Now I know where that needs cutting. So I'm going to get my shears, not scissors, and just trim that off. That's nicely in, and I'm actually following the plumb line. I will be perfectly, and that goes on there. Now, once you've got that in place, you can trim that off. So let's get it pressed in. We know that's right. I'm not happy with it. Is it on the plumb line? It's just off there. Pull it back across. I'm on it, I'm going to go with the blade. From the corner. 
Don't forget when I did the wall rock, well, I'm having to come up from the bottom, make sure you don't get there you go. Shark stings. Those that know will know. There you go. And that is lovely on there. Let's get. I'm happy. Bring in. So, can you see what I did there? Just see the pace behind it, it's not air bubbles. The corner is spot on. See the paste, I can press my finger into the paste. That corner is sharp as a pin all the way across there. I can see some paint on the top of that. I can see it now, paint from previously painted. It's not me, because it's a different color. And then I've come down there and that is plumb all the way into that corner there. Oh, and that's how it is. I'm just gonna get my sponge and just wipe off that skirting. Warm water. I'm doing it left-handed. It's not gonna be very easy. It's like that. And we're all clean. I'm happy. I'm happy at the top and I've got one, two, three and between there and there is the same distance, albeit millimetres, as what that antenna is there to the top and if you see that visually, can you see how it's offset on that fireplace? But how good does that look? How good does that look on there? Right, let me crack on. I'll get some more on and I'll talk to you at the end because now is straightforward paper hanging, which you've seen me do before. Matching these up there. And if you can see that, the match there will be a dragonfly. The match there will be that piece, which is there. So you can see how it goes staggered. So let me crack on and I'll see you at the end. I've just put my camera in place ready for when we do the conclusion at the end, but you're going to say to me, Phil, you've shown us how to get that middle centerpiece on, which is your next length you need to do. And I'm going to say the next length you need to do is the one that's got the awkward little strip because that could be drying off and you won't be able to manipulate and move that if you need to move it to get a butt joint with the second length. So I'm going to hang a length down there and if that little strip has just wavered slightly while I've been putting paper on, I'll be able to move that little strip, let's call it a little strip, against the main piece, or it's the other way around, it's the main piece and a little strip. I'll be able to manoeuvre it to get it into place. A lot of people can sometimes have a problem if they finish for the end of the day and they've gone into a corner and then just put the, the return strip on. They come the next day to get a full length on and the return strip probably isn't really where they want it to be. Whereas if you got that little strip on, then your full length, you can actually position both of them together without one being too dry and not being able to move. So that's my top tip on this, but I will see you at the end when I've got them all on and I'll talk you through what I've had to do because you know how to hang wallpaper by now. Yeah, of course you do. And this is what I was saying. I'm actually plumb on that little strip, but if you can just see there's a gap there, now, if that had dried because I'd done all the other lengths and then came back to this, I won't be able to manipulate it. Now, you can only let the paper go where it wants to go. So what I'm going to do is bring this, look, bring it across and bring that across and it loses it. I don't know if you can see it because it's such a light paper. I can bring it across and lose it. Same down here because it's not fully set up. I can't do it with the left hand. So I move that across, bring the little strip in, and it's gone. Can you see it? Now I'll work on that, put a seam roller down it, get my spatula down it, and those joints will be spot on. Now I always tell you, make sure you're matching your pattern at eye level. So that is looking pretty good. Don't hold me up. Let's get, 
let's get on with this. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a morning's work, and we've got that nicely papered. I didn't want to go through it, because you know what people are like, oh, yeah, it's boring, boring. You know how to paper if you watch some of these videos that I've done before, but the main thing is, and I can see it, I'm looking at the screen, that tail of that dragonfly is central to that fireplace. I'm on a winner. We've got a nice balanced gap between the tail and the top of the fireplace. And uh, I know because I did the measuring at the top from the antenna to the ceiling, I've got the same balance, albeit it might be a couple of mil out, not worried. But balance wise, we've got three sitting nicely above that fireplace in the middle, although we've got an offset paper, I explain that. But just have a look at this. Look at that side there. And then look at that side there, if we can do it. They aren't far off each other. So it actually, visually, as I'm looking at the screen at the, I'm looking at the camera and I can see the screen because I've got this fancy camera. I can see that that balances really nice and actually from top to bottom, it's balancing as well. And I always say to you, try and get your tops right. That doesn't always work out. You might get ceilings running out. That's one of those things. But we've got a nice balance over the fireplace and anything else behind the telly, this sofa down here, you're not really noticing it. So always get stuff at eye level, what you see, trying to get as balanced as you possibly can. But that has gone on lovely. I did take the plates off for the plug sockets, the aerial satellite sockets in the corner. There's probably a bit of a video there with me showing it, is it there? I'll let that play or it might play over, I'm not sure. So all in all, that's gone on really well. That Scion paper, paste the wall, is a lovely paper, just like the paper that was on that other video that we didn't, yeah, well, that was redone, wasn't it? But all in all, that's gone on really well. I've checked over, I've made sure that there's no paste on any of that surface, and just checking round, the joints are <laughs> falling over a glass table, I couldn't see it. But the joints are good as well. It's always good if you've got a seam roll in your pocket, just whip over at the end, just nip anything down if you see anything starting just to lift. It shouldn't do if you've got enough paste on the surface. And particularly with one of those squeegees, that flattens down that paper quite nicely. So all in all, that has gone on really well. The only thing that anybody would be a little bit concerned about when they come to hang these papers, particularly a paste the wall, the strips that went on the side were only about 12, 13 inches. I did still hang off the roll, but what I did, I made sure I cut my corner to relief, release, relief, relief, release the pressure quite early on so I could bend it into that angle and then get it in with the squeegee, trimmed off any excess, actually then on the wall, and then I'd only got a little strip to deal with when it came to actually trim off the sides. And that works both sides as well. So all in all, really pleased. I don't think I've got anything else to say. If you're liking this content, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and also press the bell so you don't miss any content coming. And as you've seen in that corner, it says paper motion. There's no paper motion on this, it's just the fact that I've got the Amazon associate links in the description below. Check those out. It's like having a shop on Amazon that people can purchase things. I get a very small percentage. Don't get excited. It's a very small percentage commission off anybody purchasing. And that's through Amazon, not through you paying me. It was a ball blown. <laughs> right, on that note, video's there. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one. Over and out.